Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the DMC sampler and how it's affecting or interacting with our shaders just so you guys get a better understanding of what's going on. So this is the last render we had and we have our func shader, our blind shader and our ward shader. You can see the difference between the blurry reflections, how it's pretty, like I put them in this order so we could see the transition from almost no blur reflections to completely blur reflections. So one of the things we did in the last video was add a sample rate uh, render element, and we're going to start taking a look at that element just so you understand what's going on. If we take a look at our sample rate, you're going to see an RGB information. Here's what's going on. Blue means it's taking the minimum samples. Red it's, means it's taking the maximum samples. So let's think about how V-Ray works. V-Ray has two kinds of samples when it's sampling a scene. It has uh, what you would call, uh, some people call secondary samples or some people call specific samples, meaning they're sample specifics to the light, sample specifics to the shader, uh, specific to your motion blur settings. Those, every single V-Ray attribute that has a subdivision um, controller or a subdivision control, those would be called those secondary samples. And everything that it's considered camera samples or that are just being sampled altogether by the camera are considered primary samples. So when V-Ray is rendering your scene, it will first sample those secondary rays, how things are reflecting, refracting, um, scattering, whatever you're trying to do. And then whatever was not sampled on that first round, it will be sampled directly from the camera. That camera sample, uh, um, also called the anti-aliasing sampler, it's very important, but you need to understand that you don't need it for everything. So on a perfect V-Ray setting, you want to make sure that your camera or your anti-aliasing sampler, it's only sampling what it needs to sample. What is that? Everything that is not secondary samples. You don't want your camera sampling to be sampling light. You don't want your camera sample sampler to be sampling reflections, refractions, etc. So things that need to be sample, uh, sampled are textures. You can see here on my checker, it's spending a lot of time on the edges between the black and white. We want that to happen. We want the camera to be sampling the texture. We don't want it to be sampling the reflection, especially the glossy reflections. So what we're going to do is we're going to be working between our high per shade and our render settings. If we come to our V-Ray DMC sampler, we see that we have one and eight. One would be pure blue here, and eight would be pure black. So this is the maximum number of subdivisions. You need to remember these are squared numbers. So one sample per pixel or 64 samples per pixel. And that's on top of whatever V-Ray already used as your specific samples. And then you have what's called a threshold. What the threshold is, is that when V-Ray is sampling a pixel, it will take two samples. And if the difference between those two samples is lower than this number, like the RGB or color information difference between those two samples is lower than this number, V-Ray will stop sampling. If the difference between those two pixels is higher than this number, V-Ray will continue to sample until it hits its maximum subdivisions. So the lower this number, the more V-Ray is going to sample, the slower your render is going to go, but the less noise you're going to have. And these, all these controls are also controlled by this guy, the DMC sampler, like universal settings. So we have an adaptive amount. This means how adaptive is going to be. Uh, what adaptiveness means is, are we going to go from full minimum samples to full maximum samples? If you leave this to zero, we're going to use always the maximum samples. If you leave this to one, it's going to go from minimum to maximum, like covering the whole spectrum. Then we have an adaptive threshold, which does exactly what I was telling you with the other uh, threshold. It controls what the difference between two samples has to be. So VRA considers it needs another sample. Uh, a minimum samples and a global 
um, like multiplier. So we're not really going to be testing this one so much. We're going to be looking at these three values. The maximum subdivision amount, it's actually a very tricky number because it's even the, like it's going to divide our specific sample. So I'm going to show you quickly what I mean. I'm going to focus on my Blin shader. I don't want to be rendering the entire thing. And I know most of my problems are going to come from my specular highlights. So let me bring my hyper shade, my Blin, and I'm going to come down to my subdivisions here. So if I bring this number to 32, I'm going to bring this to 4, which I believe is the default when you first open V-Ray. So I have this number in 32 and this number in 4. What it actually means is that for my secondary samples, because V-Ray is trying to compensate secondary samples with primary samples, it's going to divide 32 by 4, and the square of that number is going to be the amount of samples that we get in total for reflection. So the higher this number is, the more camera samples we're going to get, but the less specific samples we're going to have. So that why sometimes and sometimes raising this number will give us short, like uh, faster renders. I am, most people that come from other renders have trouble understanding that the higher your maximum samples sometimes can mean the faster your render goes. And it's because this number is dividing this number. So let's just take a quick render of this. So now we can see we have less red. That means only this part is using the maximum amount of samples, but here we get less camera samples, which is good, but it doesn't mean it's going to be less noisy. It just means it's using less samples. Uh, we have a little bit of samples but with, uh, of noise, but we've cleaned pretty much this entire reflection. It still has a little bit of noise, but we've cleaned that. But the reason I wanted to show you guys this is that I'm going to go back to my sample rate and I'm going to raise this to, I don't know, let's say 16 and render again. So now here we have a render. We reduced a lot those red areas. We have a lot more blue and green. Green are pretty much staying between. It's somewhere between your minimum and your maximum. Pure, this like pure blue would mean minimum samples. So we reduce a lot the sampling from the camera sampler here because our maximum subdivision, it's a lot higher. So we don't need to go that high. But one of the things you're going to notice if we come back to our RGB is that we've actually introduced some noise. I don't know if you guys remember the other image, but this reflection was a lot cleaner. So that's just something to keep in mind. Usually you want to have high samples on your very glossy materials. When we come to refractions, we're going to be suffering a lot with samples, but you want to have high samples on very glossy materials but then you can control those samples by raising this maximum subdivision because this is going to divide that number just so VRA can compensate between both of them. So this, when you, when you have very high samples on a material, on a light, or on something like that, numbers like 64, 128, that sometimes people are very afraid to use in VRA, please go ahead and have a shader with 256 reflection samples. I do it all the time. The moment you start racing this number, it's actually going to make your render go fast, but you're going to slowly start introducing noise again. It's not going to be as noisy as we had it in the beginning, but it's going to be a little bit more noise. The other thing I want to show you is, let's come back to our sample rate. You see here our noise and our bloom. I'm just going to raise this guy by its double. Now the difference I need between two samples is going to be 0 0.02 instead of 0 0.01 and I'm going to render it again so you guys can see the difference how that affects. So hit render. You see we have a lot of more of this pure blue here and the reason that is is because V-Ray now it's only sampling until this point. The lower this number, the more VRA is going to try to reach that maximum subdivision level. Here, since we make this number bigger, the moment that two samples only have a difference of 0 
in value, Vero is going to stop sampling. So this went faster, we get a cleaner camera sampler, but it's also going to have more noise than we had. So when you're optimizing your V-Ray settings, you always want to find that perfect balance between speed and noise. And now that you understand a little bit how this guy affects this guy and how this guy affects both of them, you can start playing a lot more with your V-Ray uh, settings. Again, most people, when they start using V-Ray, they're very afraid to have really high sampling values in shaders or lights. But if you understand how these guys affecting those samples, sometimes I'll have shaders with 500 samples because I want to have clean reflections. And it actually will render faster than if I had it in different DMC settings and maybe 32 on my shader. It's just a matter of or understanding how one is dividing the other and how when it comes to specific things like reflection, you want to have all your samples in the reflection and not in the DMC sampler. Otherwise, the DMC sampler is going to be oversampling the entire scene. So that was just a quick recap of the DMC sampler. We're going to stop here. And on the next video, we're going to start talking about Fresnel curves or reflectance curves.